During World War II, Germany developed and deployed a series of advanced weapons that were known as the Vengeance Weapons as a response to the Allied air raids that devastated many German cities and industries. These weapons were designed to strike the enemy countries from a long distance and to create fear and panic among the people. They were highly destructive and were often used against civilian targets. In this video, we will explore in detail some of the most terrifying German weapons designed during World War II. The Virgil Tumswaffen, or Vengeance Weapons. The Allied Bombings The Allied forces embarked on a relentless bombing campaign of German cities, in a series of air raids that targeted industrial and civilian areas, as well as military installations. The bombings aimed to disrupt the German war effort, weaken the morale of the population, and force Germany to surrender. The main Allied air forces that conducted the bombing campaign against Germany during the war were the British Royal Air Force, RAF, and the United States Army Air Forces, USAAF. They used different strategies and tactics, such as daylight precision bombing by the USAAF and nighttime area bombing by the RAF. The bombings caused heavy casualties and destruction in Germany. It is estimated that between 353,000 and 635,000 German civilians were killed, and millions more were injured or displaced. These campaigns diverted German resources and attention from the main fronts of the war, and forced the Luftwaffe to engage in costly air battles with the Allied bombers. A number of German cities, such as Hamburg, Dresden, and Berlin, suffered devastating firestorms that consumed large areas and created infernos and widespread destruction. The bombings had significant effects on the course of the war. They damaged or destroyed many German industrial and military facilities, and disrupted the production and transportation of war materials. However, the bombings also faced some challenges and criticisms. They were often inaccurate, ineffective, or counterproductive, and sometimes missed their intended targets or hit friendly or neutral areas. They also provoked ethical and moral debates, as they caused great suffering and death on civilians, and violated international laws and conventions. Vengeance Weapons The Vengeance Weapons Program was a series of advanced artillery weapons, designed by Nazi Germany, for strategic bombing during World War II, as a retaliatory response to Allied bombings. These weapons were intended to strike back at the Allies, terrorize the civilian population of the target countries, and potentially turn the tide of the war. They were mainly aimed at Britain, France and Belgium. The origins of the program date back to the early 1930s, where German scientists started working on flying bombs and rockets. The program was concentrated at Pienemunde, a sprawling complex of laboratories and test facilities on a remote section of the Baltic coast, near the Polish border. The technical director at Pienemunde was Werner von Braun, who was the driving force behind the V-2, and would later play a vital role in the development of rocket and space technologies. The most notable components of this program were the V-1 flying bomb, also known as the buzz bomb, and the V-2 rocket. V-1 The V-1 flying bomb, also known as Vengeance Weapon 1, was a revolutionary cruise missile, developed by Nazi Germany during World War II. This early guided missile, with its distinctive pulse jet engine, represented a forerunner to modern guided missile technology. The development of the V-1 began in the mid-1930s, where the first design that used a pulse jet engine was submitted. Multiple design iterations followed, until Robert Lusser produced a final design in April 1942, that was submitted to the Luftwaffe. Project Feisler Phi-103 was approved in June 1942 and assigned the codename Kirschker. The V-1's most distinctive characteristic was the pulse jet engine, a simple yet effective propulsion system, which emitted a distinctive buzzing sound during flight, leading to its nickname, Buzzbomb, or Doodlebug. As the buzzing noise cut out, it was an indication that the bomb had reached its target area, and the weapon had begun its terminal, steep dive toward the ground, causing widespread panic, as the impact was imminent. The pulse jet was cost-effective and provided the necessary thrust for the V-1's subsonic flight. The guidance system of the V-1 was basic by contemporary standards, consisting of a gyroscopic stabilizer and an autopilot. It flew at a predetermined altitude and distance, relying on a basic timer to control its trajectory. The simplicity of the design allowed for mass production and deployment. The first V-1 attack occurred on June 13, 1944, targeting London. Ten missiles were launched, of which four reached England. 
Subsequent attacks focused on other English cities and urban areas, at a rate of about 100 a day, causing significant damage and casualties. With a limited range of 150 miles, the buzz bomb had to be based forward on the French side of the English Channel. From there, it was fired from a slanted ramp pointed toward London. That determined its direction in flight. The V-1 carried a warhead weighing approximately 1,870 pounds. The warhead, primarily high explosive, later included an anti-personnel component, enhancing its destructive capability. Over 9,500 V-1 bombs were launched against England during the war. The Allies developed various methods to counter the V-1 threat, including interceptor aircraft and anti-aircraft artillery. Fighter planes would attempt to shoot down the flying bombs before they reached their targets. Allied bombing raids targeted V-1 launch sites in France, Belgium, and the Netherlands to disrupt the supply chain and launch infrastructure. The first phase of the V-1 assault on Britain ended in September 1944 when Allied armies in Europe overran the launch sites. Later in the war, the main targeting for the buzz bombs shifted to Belgium, principally the port of Antwerp, with nearly 12,000 flying bombs launched at the vital port city. A total of 10,492 V-1 were launched against Britain. Out of those, 4,261 were destroyed by fighters, anti-aircraft fire and barrage balloons. Approximately 2,400 V-1 landed within Greater London, inflicting 6,000 fatalities and 18,000 serious injuries. The V-1 was a cost-effective weapon for the Germans as it forced the Allies to spend heavily on defensive measures and divert bombers from other targets. Despite its psychological impact and initial effectiveness, the V-1 destructive potential was mitigated by Allied countermeasures. The V-1 legacy lies in its role as a precursor to modern guided missile technology, influencing post-war advancements in rocketry and space exploration. V-2 The V-2 rocket, with the technical name Aggregate 4, A-4, was a liquid-fueled ballistic missile developed by Nazi Germany. It was the world's first long-range guided ballistic missile. Development of the V-2 began in the late 1930s under the guidance of the German army. Werner von Braun, a leading figure in the development of the V-2 rocket technology, along with a team of engineers at the Pinamunde Army Research Center, played a central role in its design. A-4, design and construction was ordered in 1938-39, and the first successful launch took place on October 3, 1942. The V-2s were constructed at the Middlework site by prisoners from Middlebaudoro, a concentration camp where 20,000 prisoners died. The V-2 was powered by a liquid fuel engine that used a combination of liquid oxygen and ethanol, mixed with water as propellants. The engine provided thrust through the combustion of these liquid fuels. The rocket had an operational range of approximately 200 miles and could reach altitudes of over 128 miles. This allowed it to travel beyond the Earth's atmosphere before descending to its target. The V-2 rocket became the first artificial object to travel into space by crossing the Kármán line, edge of space, with a vertical launch on June 20, 1944. It was guided by an advanced inertial guidance system, which used gyroscopes and accelerometers to control the rocket's trajectory. This technology was groundbreaking for its time and influenced later developments in missile guidance systems. The V-2 was not a precision-guided missile. Its targeting relied on a combination of pre-launch calculations and mid-flight adjustments, via radio signals from ground-based stations. The inaccuracy in targeting was significant, with the missile's impact point often varying by several miles from the intended target. The V-2 rocket achieved speeds of around 3,600 miles per hour, making it nearly impossible for enemy aircraft to intercept. Traveling at supersonic speeds, it impacted without audible warning, and proved unstoppable, as no effective defense existed. It carried a high explosive warhead, weighing about 2,200 pounds. It was primarily used for targeting cities and military installations. The V-2 was used in a series of attacks, primarily against Allied cities. These attacks marked a new phase in warfare, introducing long-range guided ballistic missiles for the first time. The rocket became operational in September 1944, and the first combat launch occurred on September 7, 1944, targeting Paris. The primary targets for V-2 attacks were cities in Western Europe, including London and Antwerp. London, in particular, became a major focus of V-2 attacks, as the German military aimed to strike at the heart of the Allied war effort. 
The first V-2 attack on London took place on September 8, 1944. V-2 rockets were launched intermittently at the city, causing significant damage and casualties. The attacks disrupted daily life in London. The threat of rocket strikes led to changes in behavior, with people seeking shelter whenever the distinctive supersonic sound of the incoming rocket was heard. The attacks also caused damage to residential areas, further affecting the lives of Londoners. An estimated 2,754 civilians were killed in London by V-2 attacks with another 6,523 injured, which is two people killed per V-2 rocket. The attacks on London continued until March 27, 1945. Antwerp, a strategic port city in Belgium, was also targeted by V-2 attacks. A large number of V-weapon attacks started from October 1944 through to the virtual end of the war in March 1945, leaving 1,736 dead and 4,500 injured in Greater Antwerp. Thousands of buildings were damaged or destroyed as the city was struck by 590 direct hits. The attacks on Antwerp aimed to disrupt Allied supply lines by targeting a key logistical hub. The V-2 attacks on Antwerp occurred during the later stages of the war when Germany was increasingly resorting to desperate measures in the face of imminent defeat. The Allies developed countermeasures to mitigate the impact of V-2 attacks. This included strategic bombing campaigns targeting V-2 launch sites in France and the Low Countries to disrupt the supply chain and infrastructure. Efforts were made to intercept and destroy V-2 rockets in flight, but the high speed of the missiles made interception challenging. While the V-2 attacks caused considerable fear and disruption, they did not alter the overall strategic course of the war. The V-2's late introduction, limited production, and the Allies' advancing military successes meant that Germany could not capitalize on the rocket's potential to change the war's outcome. Despite the psychological impact and the disruption caused by V-2 attacks, they did not alter the overall strategic course of the war. By the time the V-2 became operational, the Allies had already gained air superiority, and Germany was facing defeat on multiple fronts. The V weapons killed approximately 18,000 people, mostly civilians, and caused widespread fear and damage. However, they also consumed a lot of resources and manpower that could have been used for more effective weapons or defense. They failed to achieve their intended goal of turning the tide of the war or forcing the Allies to surrender. Post-War Legacy Technology from the vengeance weapons from World War II had a significant impact on the development of rocketry, missile systems, and space exploration. The V-2 rocket was the first man-made object to reach the edge of space, and paved the way for future ballistic missiles and space launch vehicles. The V-2 rocket also inspired the creation of the first artificial satellites, such as Sputnik 1 and Explorer 1, which were launched by modified V-2 rockets. The V-2 rocket engineers, such as Werner von Braun and Walter Dornberger, were captured by the Allies and transferred to the United States and other countries, where they contributed to the advancement of rocket science and space programs. The Vengeance Weapons, despite its destructive wartime application, left an enduring legacy in the post-war era. The technology and expertise derived from the program played a pivotal role in the early development of both military missiles and space exploration, shaping the trajectory of the Cold War space race and subsequent advancements in rocket technology.